Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution! Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com <laughs> Oh shit, is it going to be a Swayze summer? Are we getting there? Oh my God. I, I look, for the, the people watching the video show at home on YouTube, I want you to know that this is, this is growing out real nice. Real nice, James. If you're watching the video show on YouTube right now or iTunes, mm-hmm. you're looking at... I've, I feel like I'm getting real close to Swayze, point break. Yeah. You? Sure. Nobody asked for it. Uh, beg to differ. No one has beg asked to differ. for it. A lot of people have asked for it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have asked for a Bodhi summer. They've said, yeah. they've called you, you, you've become war child. They said, back off war child. Sure. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Back off war child. Yeah. Seriously. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to be the ultimate, you've got to pay the ultimate price. So, eh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm halfway there. We're going to keep the hair in front of the eyes, the whole maybe I am, Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I want to get used to what Patrick... Leandro Swayze. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was his middle name, by the way, but it's it sounds like it could be. Sure. I want to I want to know what Patrick Leandro Swayze felt like when he was making Point Break. You know, right? So this is kind of it. His was it's very more, fun and flirty. His was more up and out. Up and out. Yeah, it wasn't so much. Well, we haven't put anything down in, and in front. We haven't we haven't put anything in this yet. You know what right. I'm saying? There's no. There's no perm yet, or what would what, you call it? The body wave. Yeah, we haven't put a body wave in it. Gosh, mm. is there a better term to suit that hairstyle yeah, than, than in Point Break than body wave? I know, might as well be called body glove. Yeah. Yeah. The ultimate summer, J- just chasing that, that wave, mm. brother. <laughs> Man, I'm looking forward to it. How long would you say that I have left? Professional opinion, mm-hmm. go. Um, as far as growing the hair out, hair growth, yes, you've got about three months. That's way too long. Okay, because that's that, that. We're starting to creep into summer at that point. Like, yeah, I'll, I think by summer, that's my professional no, opinion. By summer, you'll no. be able to put the sun in in the hair, sit in the sun, no. have the body wave. I'm going body wave here in about a month. I'm going to tell you that right now. Whatever happens, happens at that point. Okay, so let me tell the audience what, because he will not, he doesn't believe me on this. So what will happen (laughs) if you get a body wave and your hair is too short? Yeah. You will turn into like a, can I talk to your manager, Bob? Because it wasn't able to go around a full other time to make the wave. So you will be one-eyed Jack. Do you know what I'm one-eyed saying? One-eyed Jack. What, what's the one-eyed Jack? From the card. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Where it's just that real, that cute uh, under <laughs> bob. Um, or a regular two-eyed Jack, whatever. I just, uh, yeah. I just like the profile of the one-eyed Jack. Uh-huh. And um, that's what will happen. So if you, if you want to bet someone that right. you, to do the body wave sooner, I would definitely do that because not, it will not turn out well. I'm not betting anyone. Okay, okay. I'm I just, saying, just like, at this length, like this is starting to get out of control now, and it's mm-hmm. hard to do things. Yeah, it's going to be hard. So it's either one of those things where you know I give it, I give it four more weeks, then I'll give it a go and see what happens. Okay, great. And then if it sucks, mm-hmm. obviously I'll shave it out or do whatever. Like I don't care at that point, right? Well, you're not shaving your head. I'm not shaving my head, okay. but I'm saying like I'll I'll cut it out, you know. Oh, okay. I'll cut. I'll I'll just cut my hair short for the summer. I don't care. Right. You know. Short for the summer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, the beauty of me and all of my looks is short hair, long hair. I can pull it all off. It doesn't really matter, you know. Ah. I'm a risk taker. I go for things. Uh-huh. I'm a risk taker, Jabe's. Okay. And you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Cool. No harm, no foul. 
cool, 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 cool. You know? Yeah. Um, what I love is that you don't, I was getting my hair done yesterday. Yeah. And I was talking to the hairstylist about it and I just go, it's so hard to have a significant other that does not care at all uh-huh. if you find them attractive. <laughs> Doesn't think at all like what would, you know, like most, I would hope most guys, because girls do this. What What is my husband like? He doesn't right. like bangs, right. so I don't get bangs. He doesn't like a short hair, so I don't get short hair. But you, that doesn't even enter your mind what I may fa- find uh, attractive. Here's the thing, okay? I know you hate short hair on women. So I'm not denying you of your short hair. You just know, you know what happens to white women in yes, their but 30s when I'm get getting my hair, hair done and th- like my significant other comes into my mind of like what they may like. And you're, you're, so you're saying you might not like the Swayze, the Bodhi Summer is what you don't like. Like, because that's what we're calling it. That's what everybody like online actively, is calling it. I don't like actively making yourself unattractive for fun. I, do you, do you, I'm done with that whole thing of like, <laughs> I'm going to get a perm, guys. My wife hates it. Not, I'm going to get blot, blonde not at all. streaks. Those were, those were two bets that I lost. Mustache. Those were two Ow. Those were two bets that I lost, Jesse. Mm-hmm. And you loved it. No, I, look, I, it's just, it's who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I, I repay bets. Right. I'm not an Indian giver. Sure. I've never given back an Indian in my life. And I want you to know that about me. Right. If somebody gives me an Indian, I don't. I, I, Is that what Warren's kind of doing? She's like Indian giving where it's like. I, I feel yeah, like it, Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. I said I was an Indian. <laughs> I cannot keep. I can yeah. stay on the table. I said I was an Indian, <laughs> but now I'm taking that back. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren. That was Indian giving. Yeah. Okay, now I get Indian. Now giving. you understand. Oh, so you can say you're Native American yep. and then take that back later. Take it all back. And that's Indian giving Got it. at its finest right there. Indian taking, yeah. Yeah, so I'm an Indian. Look, I'm not an Indian giver. I'm an Indian taker. Is okay. What I am. So <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome for all of this. You don't think any part of it looks good. I would like a full Swayze, yeah. Okay. I like the mustache. Like I'm one of so what's a the few ladies that like the mustache on their husband? Yeah. Um. So I don't mind a lot of that stuff, but but it's never popped into your mind what I may like. It's probably the first conversation that we've ever had about it, and it's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> where you actually said like, well, would you like that? Yeah, yeah. That has never been asked of anything. Here's the thing, James. Would it, would it, do you, you think it would look good if? You've dated dirtbags in the past, and I've met them. I've, like, I've, I've gotten to meet them in person. Sure. So I just assumed, you know, like, oh, well, she doesn't give a shit. Like, based on her past dating <laughs> history, she does not care. Like, eh. I mean, I met a guy... In Texas one time. You remember that? Remember that story? This will be a fun one for the audience. Covered in oil. He had just gotten off work fixing cars. Which is fine. I don't like that's a that's a noble profession. I don't I don't care that he's a mechanic. I don't care at all. What I care is this. He did not even go home to shower nor change any form of clothing. And it's Mm -hmm. like it. It looked like the oil just spilled out all over his body. And then he was like, eh, I'll take a paper towel to this and then roll out. When I shook his hand, my hand smelled like gasoline the rest of the night. Again, all of that is fine. The, uh, being a mechanic is, is a noble fine. profession. And I, fuck, fine. I wish I could be a, a mechanic. Sure. However, mm-hmm. the fact that you don't care enough to go home after work and shower and then go out to a, there was like 400 people at that bar. Right. It was a lot of people that night at that bar. And I was yeah, like, I love that place, oh, fuck. Yeah. And when people walk by and it looks like you maybe were on the side of the road and, and your car had broken mm-hmm. down on top of you mm-hmm. and then excreted oil all over your body. And then you're like, I'll, I'll take a, you know, he asked me for a beer, right? When I went to the bar. To get you a beer? Yeah. yeah. He goes, hey man, can you, you go to the bar? Can you grab me a beer? Yeah. I was like, uh, sure, man. What do you, what do you, PBR? And I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I, but like I can a do tall, it. A tolly. And he goes, I'm, I'm good for it. That's what, that's what he said. And I go, oh, God. It's two, it's, it was a $2 beer. I said, you know what? We're fine on that. Um, so 
after that, you know, I met a couple of your exes. Sure. I just, th- I thought to myself, here's a woman who doesn't care, you know, but, I, and I love that about you. Free spirits, carefree, real easy going, light on your feet, uh, sometimes dangerously thin in my presence. And <laughs> yeah, I've gotten a couple messages about me wasting away. Scary thin. Oh, is she okay? So you guys, I, th- I love it. After that, I was like, ah, fuck me. Maybe she doesn't care. Maybe that's what she wants. And then when you told me that you love the mustache, I was like, oh, man, we're going back to the mechanic days. Like, the, you know? No, I just like the mustache on you. Okay. Because he had some form of. No, that was like a scrub, a, a stubble know. that isn't. It just means that you don't care. <laughs> There's no, there was no like uh, calculating like what kind of facial hair he was going to have. Sure. It was just a, I don't feel like. Shaving, yeah, yeah, which is a whole nother thing. Great, yeah, just a whole nother thing. Absolutely. Um, but I like, (laughs) you you know, I liked your calculated. I don't love a goatee, but um, sure, 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 sure. Uh, Yeah, I I thought, I thought. thought, (laughs) No, I'm not trying to turn you. No, I, I like, I like a mustache. Yeah. Uh, Okay, cool, cool. But I I thought, uh, I thought about that night the other day because a buddy of mine hit me up. You know, when you get those Facebook reminders of this is what you were doing fucking oh, yeah. 10 years ago mm-hmm. or seven years ago, whatever the fuck it was. Uh, one, of my, one of my beef fries, Brandon Bonfiglio, sent me a picture from that night. Um, was he there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Too, yeah. Uh, when we were out, because it was an out, whatever that bar was, it was in Austin, Texas. It was awesome. It's awesome. It's, it it's like one of my, east, it was like one of my favorite side, bars yeah. I've ever been to. Martin Starr was there too. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Um, just chilling. Yeah, yeah. We, he was I, friends I chatted with, with the with mechanic him. guy. Yeah, I chatted with him for a while because yeah. I, I cast his mom in a couple yeah. of my movies. You've worked with her. Mm-hmm. Oh, she was your mom in Helen Keller vs. Yeah. Nightmares. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jean St. James. <laughs> and uh, she's awesome, by the way. Awesome. Uh, but, but he He's sent me really a picture of that night <laughs> and there was, uh, there was a, a PA with us um, out. Yeah. And... I remember him saying that, and he goes, "Man, Jesse dated an actual grease monkey." Yeah, like a real, like a re- like he is covered in grease out at a bar as we speak. And I was yeah. like, "Yeah, didn't didn't really picture that. Didn't really picture that." But either way, I, so after that, I just thought you didn't care. Um, you're my first frat guy. <laughs> didn't you're against type for sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. but. Like it. All right. Well, I mean, it's been, long, it's been what, seven, eight years at this point. So yeah, I, would, I would figure, I would hope so at this point. It's you know? okay. Yeah, it'll do. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We're just kind of seeing where things go. Yeah. Seeing where the tide takes us. We're, Swayze. We're keeping it loose, right? You I, and me. I have a feeling. Keeping it loose. I'm going to keep using ocean references the entire show. See where that tide takes us. <laughs> yeah. You know? Ankle slappers. Yeah. Not worth it. Don Patrol. Big cahoons. Get on out for Dawn Patrol. Is all we do. We got some sponsors, and I just got back from the Super Bowl. So we're, we're going to get a chance to talk about that and everything that went on that weekend. Um, and, and then, because you, you watched the game, I want to see how it was for somebody who watched that game versus somebody who was at that game. And if, if, if probably the same, if the game was just as boring, um, so probably we'll the exact same. We'll see. I prayed for that, though, for a boring game. Yeah, because right. fuck you. Oh, yeah, exactly. We'll talk We'll talk <laughs> in a second. You could have came, so I don't want to hear it. Uh, first up, we got BlackRifleCoffee.com. BRCC, doing big things. I talked about that Whoopi a lot, right? Greatest thing on the planet. Uh, Matt Best on his Instagram, at Matt Best Official, my co-host, was wearing a Whoopi hoodie out into the world and it, with a Black Rifle Coffee logo on it. And they're like, hey, Ross. What the fuck is that? That's not available. It will be soon. And when okay. that goes on sale, whew, forget it. I, those will sell out in like 30 seconds. So if you want to be the first one to get it, you've got to sign up for the Coffee Club of the Month program on Black Rifle Coffee. I don't even think you have to necessarily subscribe to the coffee every month, like get it shipped to your house. I think you can just sign up for the mailer. And they have like the best deals and shit. And they always have free fucking giveaways. Um, again, those gun safes and now they're doing another oh, yeah, I saw that. huge giveaway yesterday. I got an email for him. I was like, God damn, man, are you guys making money or just giving shit away all day? Um, which they're is, okay. Which is amazing. I don't worry about them. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't either. But I mean, their giveaways, like 
No, it's awesome. Yeah, I just why don't more companies do that? I don't, I, like it makes me look forward to their mailer. Usually, I get these fucking emails from companies, and I'm just like, "Holy Christ, man! Can you stop sending me?" You know, you might like this. Yeah. Uh, can you write a review for this and fucking do that? No, I can't. I can't do any of that, and I don't want to subscribe to your shit. Yeah. So, the, the Black Rifle Coffee is not a company that does that. However, they make the best coffee in the world. Uh, K cups, bags, all of that. Shit. I got a picture from Joe, by the way, uh, the, from the Wilmington Firehouse. They took it, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, took a picture with all the coffee on the, on the truck. Sweet. It was awesome. I uh, love Black Rifle, man. Everybody drinks it. Uh, go to blackriflecoffee.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. That's a one-time use. Next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Tons, tons and tons and tons of messages uh, thanking them for, for, for doing that. Um, in case you haven't been listening to the last couple of shows, their new promo is 15% off for all military and first responders on mattresses, pillows, sheets, everything, adjustable bases. So that's good for all of their products on the website. That's a fucking monster savings there. And, you know, I would say 50 to 60% of our audience is, is military or first responders. And that's massive, man. Uh, they threw some big deals over the holidays. There's still deals on there if you are non-military or non-first responder. So you can get $200 off a mattress and free pillows and all that stuff. But you, if you are, you take advantage of that 15%. They didn't say how long it was going to last. Um, but that's, I mean, fuck, that's an extra $200 off of what you're already getting. Like, yeah, it's amazing. Um, there, there is very few companies that do things like this that, I, that we love. And everybody keeps asking why we've had Ghostbed for so long. If you're going to do a, a podcast and promote a mattress or something of a big ticket purchase like this, that's, you know, six or 700 bucks or whatever it is, you better goddamn like it because I would feel guilty if I was schlepping this thing and you went out there and were like, hey, bro, this was, yeah. you just told me to waste $700 on something oh. and it's like, oh, fuck. I would feel awful about it for real. Luckily, I have not, this is one product we've never received one negative email about in two years um mm -hmm. and it's the it, look they're the best the pillows are the best all of their products are amazing so go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros again we're keeping it the same as the drinking bros store um just because it's you know we have a lot of of crossover audience i think 50 percent of our listeners listen to uh drinking bros as well and it look it it, it is well worth it out of that company. Love them. Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Jade. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It's your blinkers. Look at that. They just sent you a new box of freedom there. A Ridge. Yeah, you're, you're, you like the Ridge. That's your favorite. I do like an Ridge. Is that the 40-pack? That is the 40-pack. Uh, for anybody watching the video show, again, these... I, so I've got mm -hmm. the 10-packs on my side. Yeah. Uh, you've got the 40-packs on your side. They're already like rip a bowl at the top so you can just rip off the top and then keep them out yeah. in your house or in your bar why the, the reason is they're in like a thousand seven elevens so the, these these boxes that you order off the internet it's the same boxes you can get in seven eleven um that or like these are like the display so they'll like correct this out yes. and like this whole box is will what be the display yes at, and so that's what you're giving that, that's what of they're of giving like you so yeah yeah. Thing, yeah so if you get it and order it to your house that's what you're getting you're actually getting the display box so you can just rip it open and keep it on your counter so that way shit's not everywhere you don't have to put it in a ziploc bag or yeah whatever you're doing because it's just a little pouch man it's just a, a little you know ripper just a little ripper you rip it open pour it in, into whatever you're drinking so Meh. it's not a can look at the size of that that's a, that's a 40 pack right there these are 10 so small it's easy. can you imagine a 40 pack of red bull sitting on no. here how a, much a bunch of cans would take how up much your whole fucking, fucking desk. space that would take up kick the cans kick the cans kids it's over uh the revolution has began uh, as far as energy drinks go so go to strikeforceenergy.com no carbs or sugars for everybody dieting out there so in case you're crashing in the afternoon, that is over with. StrikeForceEnergy.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Good every single time. Last but not least, it's StraightRazors.com, Jabes. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you're right. Oh, God. <laughs> you did that extra loud because I just got home and you, and you hate me. Um, I don't hate you. That's, that's just ringing through my ears. Straightrazors.com is, uh, I finally got to take all the, the giant bottle with me, by the way, on the trip. Um, well, that's right, because you drove. I drove. I, I, we have all the film equipment, all that stuff, but um, man, 
Drove to Atlanta. I finally get to take all of my straight razor shit, like all the big bottles and all that stuff. They sell travel bottles. I'm out. Um, I got to hit up Luke Webster or just fucking buy them, man. I, I always buy their shit. So uh, big fan of theirs, man. I, I got to lay out, stretch, stretch out all my shit on the counter. I like doing that. You know, they took a fucking straight razor from me. T- TSA did. Uh, they did? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to shave with it. The guy was shocked too. He was just like, what the fuck are you doing with this? And I was like, I'm shaving with it because I'm a fucking man. Right. And he was like, oh, well, you can't take this because you, you might not. kill someone on the plane. Yeah. And I was like, look, yeah. Holmes, I don't need a fucking blade to kill someone on a plane. I do it with my bare hands. I do it with my, my 10 digits, brother. What did he say to that? Uh, he was not stoked. Sure. And he looked at me like I was some form of natural born killer. Yeah. And I just said, look, I'm a man. And if you want to, and I, and I told him, I go, look, if you were a man, you'd go to straightrazors.com. <laughs> I did. I swear to God. And he goes, I don't know what that is. And I was like, well, you will, you do now, you asshole. Will now. And use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. They get everything mustache waxes, it's beard like, oils, okay. uh, shaving products. Their razors are second to none. They've even got a safety razor. I could have taken the safety razor. Fuck it. But, you know, I am who I am. Jabes, you're not going to change me. No, it's not I'm like I'm rolling around with Gillette. The worst a man can get. What? Go to straightrazors.com, 20% off with the promo code REVOLUTION. Big fan of those guys. And as always, pick up a night she cries while he rides his steed. And when darkness falls, he doesn't catch it. The funniest books ever written by me. And the audiobooks are, <laughs> look, still number one. Last one is still number one on all of Audible. 4.999. Uh, crushing the game. Six and a half hours worth of laughter. In each audiobook. Um, and it's also the most disgusting experience you'll ever have in your life. And I feel positive about that. I feel positive about that. Also, I felt, uh, I felt positive about Super Bowl weekend. We got a lot of great interviews. I was in Atlanta, GA. Um, got to see my parents. Got to see my family. Got to go to the game. So, so here's how it all sh- uh, shook out. There's, I mean, there's one part of the story that I can't tell. Um, which you know about. Yeah. Yep. Don't even, don't even smirk. Don't even say anything. Um, one day, that will be one of the funnest stories of all time to tell. Right now, no. it is not. Uh, so, first night in, boom. Started off with interviews, bust in the door. Uh, th- those are always fun because we always have you know, 30, 40 people over there because uh, all the players bring their wives, friends, all that shit. Uh, we lay out drinks for everybody. Freddie Mitchell from the Philadelphia Eagles stayed I with us all weekend. Him. He was the best, man. And he gave one of the best interviews ever. So that one's coming up in a couple of weeks on, on Drinking Bro Sports. Um, just a fucking down-ass dude. And there, there, it was so wild how all of that shook out. And I don't know if I told the audience any of this, but... We interviewed Freddie for opening day of the NFL season in Philadelphia. He's got one of the wildest personalities of any athlete you'll ever meet. But he's smart and funny and, and cool where you're like, all right, cool. He came in. We did the interview. It went great. And I told the, the, our, the mutual friend that we had that hooked us up with the interview. I was like, man, that guy was fucking awesome. We had a blast. So we ended up tailgating with us all day for like three or four hours in Philadelphia You know, you exchange numbers and all that shit like you do. But there's a lot of famous people that you do that with. And it's like, man, I'm never going to bother these people. Yeah, you'd feel weird texting. Feel weird. Yeah. Um, Like, yeah, just be a little bit too close. Yeah, where you're just like, hey, are we we getting too close? Hits me up. It's like, hey, man, you guys are going to the Super Bowl to do shows. It was like, yeah, where are you staying? I was like, ah, fuck. We got an Airbnb, you know, four bedrooms. We usually nuke out the dining room and... uh uh, for shows and stuff yeah yeah, yeah for, yeah, for yeah. shows lighting equipment and all that stuff and i was like but man it's a you know a party and we have a bunch of events to go to and all that stuff all right and he was like awesome man can i stay with you I'd, lo- I'd love to party and hang out with you for the weekend i'll do some interviews i was like fuck yeah you can um even to the like to the down to the day i hit you up and i was like hey F- freddie's actually here like yeah you i was can't. like yeah you told me you're like i know but you never you don't know. really know yeah yeah because yeah. usually you get the, the cool or what's up yeah we'll chat or i'll hit you up later yeah yeah he came in and it was me dan josh and him and uh you, you, look if you listen to drinking about sports you know d'anthony like um and it was a fucking blast he fit in with us seamlessly was was the, the like a an awesome like roommate and f- I mean it was fucking awesome like we yeah. had a, a an absolute blast with that guy uh, so much so like there's so many parties going on throughout the Super Bowl that 
look, Freddie's famous as shit, former NFL player, great NFL player. Uh, he had a bunch of meetings and stuff to go to. He was doing some givebacks uh, with, with children during the morning and, um, and things like that. But at night, he was just like, hey, can we go can we go to these parties or whatever? Like, well, we can roll together. I was like, yeah, sure. So we went to the, the Porsche party first on Friday night. And the reason why I bring this up, this was hosted by Ray Lewis. Okay. I brought up Ray Lewis on that our you show. going to get the, maybe get the interview. Get the interview with Ray Lewis and we were supposed to talk to him. And I was like, man, well, I was joking on the show. And I was like, what's it, what's it like to be in Atlanta for the first time? It was 20 years since mm-hmm. the last Super Bowl was there. And he had murdered a couple people. Sure. No big deal. Got off on it. Right, 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 right. right. And uh, we go to his party and, um, you know, meet him there and all that stuff and say, hey, he's going to come by the thing. Uh, it's, it's at the Porsche Museum in Atlanta and they had drivers there. So you could drive on the course in a Porsche. Go as fast as you want. Do donuts, all That's that how shit. Paul War- Walker went. Though. R.I.P. Paul Walker. Wasn't and, he like testing a... Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody was driving it, but he was on a street, on an open road, not on a racetrack. Like, this was at a professional racetrack and all that stuff. Um, Like, a real one. And, you know, everybody was doing that. Tons of celebrities. Eddie George was there, a bunch of people. Uh, Great party. Um, Great events. It was a nice mixer, and they were doing some stuff for charity. Ray goes up to give a speech, Mm -hmm. and a reporter was in the audience, and... If you haven't heard Ray Lewis talk, it's 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 like gospel. It's like going to church on Sunday where it's just he commands the room. His voice is just carries. I, he might have even been a preacher at one point. Right. Um, and during the middle of this eloquent speech that he's giving, I would say five minutes in, there was a reporter there who just screams out. And imagine you're at a party like a gala. Everybody's you know yeah, dressed yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, you know, amazing food and drinks and all that stuff and free and open bar and all that stuff. The reporter just screams out, Ray, Ray, do you have anything to say to the families of the ones murdered 20 years ago? Oh, and I'm like, God. oh my God. And he wouldn't, oh, wait, 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 God. he wouldn't stop. So he would not stop. And the area we were in, like to get into this party, you had to be someone. And like, I don't want to say that to make myself sound like an asshole, but you had to be someone, you know, like, that's not the type of party where that shit happens. Right. If, you were, if we were out at a public event, I, could, I can understand that. Or maybe, sure. you know, somebody's trying to make a name for themselves. But not inside a, a gala like that where you're just like, mm-hmm. whoa, what the fuck is going on? I mean, everybody tripped out over it. Uh, Snoop Dogg was there. Like, I mean, there was a bunch of people who were just like, get this motherfucker out of there. Where we were at, there was so much security on the outside because, well, let's face it, everybody who was inside... Right. was kind of important. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to cause a ruckus at some thing like that. There's not going to be any fights or any guns right. drawn. Like, you know, it's some of the richest people on the planet test driving Porsches for Christ's sakes. Sure. Right. There was no security couldn't get to this guy. So he's yelling this out for, I, in my estimation, it would probably have been for like close to four minutes. Do you know how awkward and oh, uncomfortable that was so for four fucking minutes before they could get security outside the perimeter inside to get this guy and remove him and it was just like it killed the whole event. i mean it was just such a buzz kill for the event like luckily we were going somewhere else after that but i was just like oh no. what did ray do he tried to talk over him mm-hmm. and you know unsuccessfully uh, a couple other celebrities had joined in like Snoop Dogg and some other people and said something back to this guy and whatever. And you're just trying to control the situation at this point. He killed people though, right? I think so. But he got, he was in, he was proven innocent. So I don't know. You know, look, OJ's still looking for the real killers, James. Right. So, um, I, it was shot. It was like, Whoa, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. it, it was, it was kind of shocking. Um, and this, so this was late. And then afterwards we went to uh, post Malone and Aerosmith. Uh, they were playing uh, right across the street from the stadium. and That's cool. Sort of. So here's why I say sort of, right? Uh, with, with Post Malone. So it, the Ray Lewis interview at this point, by the way, went out the window. Because of that situation? You didn't want to talk to anyone after that? I don't think so. Okay. Because that, yeah. then that would, that, that would have been a question of, Hey man, what happened to your, right. it was his event too. It wasn't like it was somebody else's. It was his and this fucking went down. Right. And it was just like, all right, 
this is kind of a buzzkill, right? Go to Post Malone, and we're supposed to interview Post Malone over the weekend. Uh, we'd been back and forth with his camp and his people and all that shit. Um, uh, he goes on late uh, at at the the event. Kind of don't know what's going on. Um, and at certain at a certain point in the night, we lost contact with him, right? And it was like, what the fuck is happening? This is weird. Goes on, destroys. Cr- I mean, crushes. Post Malone live is phenomenal. And it's just him. It's just him and a guitar, and that's it. And it's amazing. Uh, really, really re- great show. Aerosmith comes on afterwards and is terrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. We walked out. We stayed for two songs and then walked out after that. Um, and at this point, we're just kind of checking our phones waiting to see what's the deal with Post Malone and if we can interview him. Because we said, look, we'll be on standby the whole night. It's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, His buddy, uh, 21 Savage. Yeah. Who sang Rockstar with Mm -hmm. him. uh, Is one of his best friends. Didn't come out to perform that song, which I thought was weird. I was like, man, he would, I'm sure he would be there at the Super Bowl, right? Right. Did not come out to perform, start checking Twitter that night first person that is trending number one on twitter is 21 savage this might be the wildest story of the weekend he's getting deported where is he from england i no one no one knew in america none of me like myself nobody who's listened to his music no one knows that he's british i mean it was the ultimate end all be all shock yeah, I talked to him. I talked to him at the Charlotte show when we were supposed to do the Did interview. Did he have a twin? I have a picture with, I got a picture with him afterwards. Did he have a twin? Nothing. Nothing. Sounds like, because he, like, uh, by all oh accounts, everybody thought he was from Atlanta. Um, for, forever. So I talked to him. I, I've, I've talked to him. Nothing. No hint of a British accent. Nothing. And he gets popped by ice. And he's, he's currently in the state of deportation, so he's stuck somewhere at some jail somewhere waiting to get deported because he's been on an expired visa, I guess, for 10 years. And awesome. legally, they're trying to figure out, like, uh, so Post Malone's offered help. Um, Jay-Z was the latest over the weekend to offer help financially. I mean, all of these rappers have, have come out. And, and everybody in the community to speak out and help about this. What are you helping him from going back to England? Yes. He'll be fine. Legally and all England that other shit. England is gorgeous. And I'm sure he has family there. What are we saving 21 Savage from? I, I don't know. We're but not deporting I, I him to Guatemala. So many questions at this point. I mean, so many questions at this point. He did not have any British accent when I met him and, and hung out with him. This was like fucking five months ago. Six months ago? When, when was I there? Six months ago, I think? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, this is how it talks like this. Okay. Cool. Okay. Hey, do nice to meet you. Yeah. All right. You know, a lot. How much money you got? A lot. How many people you kill? A lot. Right. How many times have you been shot? A lot. A lot. No. No. I mean, not a, not a hint, not a twinge, not one word of like, oi, or whatever, you know, your British accent. I think you're the best doing the British accent on this show. <laughs> Oi. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So the shock of that was just like, what? Apparently, and I looked it up. Apparently, he came over here at like 13 or 14. Okay. Um, And has been here since. But he's not old. I think he's only like 24 or 25. Right. So how do you lose a British accent? Completely. Oh, well. Entirely. And oh, all that's of his easy. songs, he says he's from that's Atlanta. That's easy. Says he's from Atlanta. It's easy to lose the accent. It's not easy if people knew you were British before. So, like, the only person that I've known that can do that has done it is Mel Gibson, to where we just don't. <laughs> well, he's got an Australian accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't have an Australian accent anymore. No, no, he doesn't. So, but he did used to, and yes. in interviews yep. and, you know, Entertainment Tonight, and up until probably like what women want, 90s, maybe. Right. He still had a little <laughs> hint. He had a hint. Yeah. But we we just sort of forget now that he was even Austra- Australian, right? Yeah. Anyone else, you'd kind of be like, hey, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you, it's easy to lose the accent. They do it in movies all the time. If they wanted to, they could. It's just the I thing guess. of 
how much scrutiny you would get of like, hey, man, I guess you fucking have no accent anymore, huh? Or like whatever. And they usually get more shit from their people back home, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like if Christian Bale didn't have his fucking accent, he'd be getting shit from like his family. And when he goes right, back, right, they'd right, be like, right. oh, all right. <laughs> Big fucking American movie star, right? Oi. Yeah, well, I, I'm I always too for, good for a song. I always forget Christian Bale has an accent until he wins oh. an award, and then I'm like, and oh, it's so thick, thick. and yeah. almost Cockney, and in a way that, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, he's the people that he's trying to <laughs> let them know yeah. that he's still cool yeah. are like, you know, low level London. <laughs> So th- the thing of losing the accent, not an issue. The oh, thing of losing man. it, it's like, you know, uh, Lindsay Lohan can now have a British accent. It's easy to do. It's just the scrutiny of like, okay, so you're British now? Like, sure. not really sure how that happened. Um, Madonna did it. She then lost it because right. it was like too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I look. Again, I, I just though, assumed he was a rapper from Atlanta, as did the rest of the world. Sure. It came as a huge shock. We get a text, probably I would say at two. Th- we finally heard back from Post Malone like two thirty or two forty five in the morning in a text, right? And it was like, hey man, super sorry about whatever, and some things went down. He didn't get into it. We didn't get into it. Sure. I, I just after going through Twitter and the rest of the world, I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna scratch this off. Kind of disappointed. Obviously, because I love him. Obviously, I'm a huge fan. That was... But then Saturday, I get a call from Terrell Davis, who was one of my football favorite football players as a kid. Fantasy legend, just went into the Hall of Fame. And he goes, hey, man, I love your shows. It's cool if I pop by. And I was like, what? The highs and lows of the weekend right. were like, holy shit. All right. Yeah. That, that's, st- that's amazing. So wait, I, Terrell I Davis was not on our list, by the way. Right. He was not on our list, but I was like, if you would have told me that going in, I would have been fucking ants about it all weekend, right? Right. And then he comes. What are you laughing about? So he, he shows up, and I'm like, holy a shit. fund me to help 21 Savage not go back to the horrible country. Is there, is there, a, go, is there a GoFundMe for I'm right just now? saying you're like, Post Malone's offering help. Uh, Jay-Z's offering help. It, no, it like, would not surprise me if there's a GoFundMe for 21 Savage. He's though. fine. Like, yeah. He might... It would be a lovely time. It's really beautiful out there now, (laughs) this time of year. It's hilarious to me that we're trying to help 21 Savage from going back to Britain for a bit before he figures out his visa situation again. Carry on. Yeah. uh, Whatever. Terrell Davis showed up, and that was totally unexpected, completely amazing. He was awesome, and it was just like, oh, my God. This is amazing. So, like, you know, then you go back through the highs of, like, holy shit. And then the Foo Fighters played that night. Mm-hmm. Um, they've, they played in a, in a dome, this little silo that was constructed a week ago only for this event. Once the event is over, they're tearing it down. And that's it. That, that, like, this thing does not exist anymore. Mm-hmm. It was massive. It had three floors in it of stairs and all of that shit. Um, we had VIP f- for, for all of it and, and it was, it was incredible. I will say this though. There's, there's layers to the VIP at the Super Bowl. I was in the, there's a, there's a tier one and I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't in that. Mm-hmm. I wasn't famous enough for that tier. And you're probably asking yourself, well, who is it's Mark Cuban? Mark Cuban was in that tier, like Dak Prescott, right. like mega, mega stars. And then there was a tier two where it was just like, Hey, those guys are kind of, remotely famous you know we were in the tier two and uh it, it was a blast i got to meet uh sage steel sage against the machine we did an episode uh you and i did called fire jameel hill from sports center and i literally said on that show if you go back and listen to it i don't understand why they just don't fire her and put sage steel and she's the fucking best you know and if they were worried about fi- firing somebody black and then not hiring somebody black, that's your answer right there because she's the, she's the best to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I saw her, I was like, fucking A, this happened. And I told her the story of what happened on our show. And she was like, it's mine now. It's mine now. And I'm like, eh, all right. And she was rad. She was like the, the nicest person in the world. Freddie knew her. So, mm-hmm. it was, so it was great. We had a great time at that. Foo Fighters put on one of the greatest shows of of all time, I mean, they're, they're, they're just an all-time band where you're just like, holy shit. It, it, they could not be more energetic and incredible. And they brought out Queen. 
the surviving members of Queen to play under pressure. And it was that just crazy. amazing. Uh, amazing. But uh, Dave Grohl was like, hey, uh, can you believe we're playing in a place that was built a week ago and they're just going to tear it down? You do kind of look around underneath you and you're like, man, is this, this could fall, this could fall at apart any... at any moment, I feel. Right. Um, but it was a blast. And then that was, that was a high, you know? So you come off of that high, uh, did an interview, uh, a couple interviews the next day we did it with the, the sneaker guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which is on ours. Yeah. Uh, Yeezy Busta. Mm-hmm. Ended up being a fun interview. I like it. Wore him. a mask the entire time. I do too. A great guy. Like a really great guy. He had a good sense Vibe. of humor about it. He's awesome. And he was handling you guys hating um it, it not really, not, not hating I, I but was, like i said look congratulations you're look, making a lot of money off of this and it's awesome right but like really if you're talking to anyone with a mask it's hard to not be like hey bro yeah so if you didn't listen to the last episode the, the guy's name is yeezy busta on uh instagram and youtube and all that stuff he's got a huge youtube following fuck i wish we had his following for Christ's sakes, go to YouTube and subscribe to the, the, the videos. We're making videos a thing this year. That's our New Year's resolution. Yeah. The video show is a big deal for us this year. So we're doing, we're doing that. Um, but while you're on there, if you want to check out his page as well, feel free. He was a great guest. He got famous for just posting on Instagram celebrities wearing fake Yeezys, the, the, the sneaker that Kanye West came out with. And it turns out there was a lot of them. And then his, yeah. his channel blew up. He, you know. He blew up. He makes a ton of money, and it's it's crazy that somebody's making a living off of that. Mm-hmm. Either way, he was on the show. It was a really fun interview, and then uh, and then the game itself. So we go to the Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, I'm from Atlanta uh, originally. Um, I wanted I, it, it meant a lot to me. I wanted to to take my parents to the game. Um, uh, we have a guy. A guy was on our show named Benny Daniels. Uh, tickets to All Now is his company, um, and he does tickets across the nation. He's been on Drinking Bro Sports a couple of times. He was able to hook, hook up my parents with like tickets, you know, super, super cheap. And it was fucking great. And I got to take them to the game because um, it is a once in a lifetime type of deal. And I hope you'll come with me next year because mm-hmm. it's fun to see all this shit. Right. Uh, regardless of what goes on. Security keeps getting crazier and crazier. These things every year. They built a barrier about 100 yards away from the stadium that went all the way around the stadium. And you had to go in through this like Disney Park like thing. Security has gotten insane at these things, uh, but to but to see it all and, and the happiness of it, it, it is a blast. It is super corporate. Um, you do have people there who are just there to see a once in a lifetime experience of the Super Bowl, and they're not necessarily cheering for teams. Mm-hmm. So you do have that. Um, the, the matchup again with the Patriots was not something I wanted to see. The Patriots fans are fucking awful, by the way, like miserable human beings. Um, just. The worst to be around. Tom Brady. Mm, yeah. Fucking, we're going to win it. It was. Six. I, I, yeah. Number six. S- number six. It's the game itself. The, the Patriots style play is so boring to watch that it, you know, look, they got in there and it was the lowest scoring Super Bowl of all time. The game itself was boring. Was it boring to you watching it at home? Were like people pissed off about the game when you were watching it? Um, I was watching, I was in the girls section, which we had talked about. I think it was last year, whenever the last year that you were home and didn't go to the last super, year, it was last year. You didn't go last year. I didn't go last year. And then we went to a friend's house. It was in Minneapolis. Yeah, I was, I was, in, it, the, the game was in Minneapolis. I didn't want to go to Minneapolis. And we went to a friend's house and it was like the girls and guys were all on the same couch and you were like, you and another guy were dying because you're actually wanting to watch yeah, the game. And then the girls are kind of talking over you guys. Yep. And so we actually had in the, um, the place that I watched it, we had like a girl and kid down t- downstairs right. and then a guy <laughs> media room. So you actually might have had more fun at this party than at the super bowl but good so like all the guys were up there watching on the big screen yeah, yeah, yeah. like had their whiskey up there nice. no kids were bothering them and then we were down there just talking shit because we didn't care about the game and just waiting for maroon five to come on yeah and his what, shirt what was to your, come off yeah what, what, what were your, what was your thoughts on that on that halftime show really boring okay uh really boring and i was in a room with women that loved it uh, love Maroon Five, loved the show, love him. Yeah, 
I know how short and small and dainty he is. Right. So I can't rap. I can't go there as far as like a sexy guy. Mm -hmm. I know that like classically, I guess I'm supposed to. He's like ripped and he has tattoos everywhere. Yeah. So like I'm supposed to think he's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's really hard because I know he comes up to my hip. Yeah. Which is hard. Yeah, yeah, hard to to really. Yeah, but it was really boring, and I think that was the thing. I had like a little friendly bet with one of the dads there, and it was like, even then, it was yeah. just like, what the fuck is happening? So the the game was really boring. I had more fun hanging out with the people that I was hanging out with, and then the real competition was the chili cook off, and that's. What we really want to get into. That's what people really want to hear. They don't know. They don't want to know about the ins and outs of a fucking game that, you know, some of us may never be able to go to. Yeah, you do, actually, because the experience is nice. But for you, because you were there. No, no, no. It, 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 like, I it wasn't a fan of either one of those teams. And it's it, it's just a, it's a it's a it's a nice experience to be at where so you're like, man, I you, you do feel it in the stadium that you're at the most watched event in the world. And like you, you're aware of that. But right. the chili cook off, though, I, I argue that it probably should have been telecast instead of the game. It was more interesting. There was a lot more, you know, highs and lows yeah. of that <laughs> competition than there was of the slow moving, low scoring piece of shit game. OK, so let's get to this. Let, let's get to your lows of your chilly day. How did this start off for you? What time did you start? Because for you, whenever we go to these things, you start real late with these dishes like you're on the clock, like you're in one yeah, of those because chef I shows. like to have that kind of pressure. I like to be totally unnecessary. Right. But for me, it is necessary because it really brings a lot of oh, boy. a lot of mad, you know, a lot of <laughs> pressure and a lot of, you know, that that competition that yeah. I need in my life that I only get from neighborhood food competitions, cookie okay. exchanges, chili cook offs. Yep. That's my only form of like real competition these days. OK, so I really need to ramp it up. All right. So I started the day before, obviously. You and did. no one Yeah, All it's right. chili. Like with chili you have to cuz the flavors have to develop overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just how it goes. Uh, yeah, I get it. If I, I could it. start the day of, I would have, but you can't. Yeah. And um I kind of was talking to other people in the neighborhood. Um it, it ended up being more of a guys competition like You know, I was All the guys made the chili and I was thinking it was like girls making it and so i was like oh shit like i just entered the guys competition basically yeah, I, not knowing i was gonna say that because with chili chili's very dude like it's, it's very, very dude it's very you know passed down from dad 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 you know what i mean like yep. um so uh i talked to d'anthony d'anthony about it because he says he's a like triple crown yeah, he, he is. He is actually. Like, he, yeah, he my wins, co-host and drinker wins sports. a bunch yeah. Yeah. of chili cook-offs. So I talked to him the night before and was like, gave him the rundown of everything I did. He, you know, begrudgingly listened to me and right. helped me a little bit. But, you know, we both decided that this year was just feeling it out. You know, I don't know what this crowd is into spice wise, beans yeah. or no beans, pork and beef or just beef. Like you have to really see what people are liking. No, I get it. I get it. So bring the chili in, mm -hmm. schlep the chili in and the two kids by myself. Um, ah, there it is. There, there it, is. it is. Yep. I was waiting for that. Got it. So do all this. Mm -hmm. Make the chili by myself. And um, bring it in. I'm tasting all the different chilies, and I just am like, I lost. Like, I lost mine. How many chilies total were in it? Twelve. Twelve. Eleven, okay. sorry. Eleven chilies. Okay. Eleven chilies. It's a lot of chilies. All different kinds. Um, there's white chili. There was veggie chili. Prime rib. Okay. Um, you know, beans, no beans. Watery. Super thick. I mean, every kind okay um and so i was trying all the different ones first of all i tried my buddy our buddy nick's which was the prime rib one ah. we were talking shit to each other the night before via text like sending pictures of our chili like oh shit is that some jalapeno in there fuck you, yeah dude right you know yeah, just yeah. some healthy shit talking before the competition 
So I tried his, voted for his actually because it was awesome. But anyway, I just thought I didn't win. I was like, it's too bland. There's no way these people, all these chilies are really spicy. Mine's not spicy enough. I'm in my head the whole time. They like, it's taking forever right. to do the drawing. Like, and everyone puts their number one on the thing, puts it in a bowl, whatever. How many, how many hours have gone by at this point? Like how long was the? It was probably an hour. Okay. Hour and a half before they actually announced it. So people are tasting 11 different chilies for like an hour and a half. Okay. And you're just like, there's not that many people here. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're good. We've all tasted. I'm yeah. sure everyone has their winner. Like, let's go. Um, this, is the only, this is only the second chili that I've ever made in my life. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't make chili. I don't even know why I entered. I was just like, it's a food competition. I do it. Like, yeah, yeah, of there's course. no, it's not like, well, oh, this is my specialty. Let me do it. I was just like, oh, what? Competition? It, Let's do if it. If you're a real chef, though, you have to figure it out. Be able to out. make everything. Yeah. It's like, guys, True. it's like triple G. You know what I'm saying? You've got to figure the fuck out. Sure. And uh, yeah. that's, that's the test of a real chef. So, anyways, I got second. That's great. Second place, dude. First year, first year entering this neighborhood's competition. Yeah. Second chili I've ever made ever. Yeah. Um, I lost to an older gentleman who named, like, branded his chili Lombardi chili. Yeah, the Lombardi chili. How was it? Was did you, did only, you have the chili? Was it good? I didn't. It was really good. It was just a classically like, oh, okay, like, right. That's a chili. So, what's your plans for next year to help improve your chances at becoming number one? Um, I think I'm just going to go gonna branding. Brand so I need to think of a, a catchy name. I'm going to bring my own placard instead of like using their Sharpie. And what about their... the, the, the Brett Favre bean chili? You know, something like that. Okay. We can talk about it. Yeah. We'll workshop some we're not stuff go over the, the next We're not going to go with the first name thrown out. No, no, no. You no, know no, what no, I definitely. mean? This will be it. But I'll put that one in the pot. This will be an, an endless conversation between us for the next 364 days. Yeah. Um, it's all we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, branding. And then I'm going to kind of have, I think I'm going to have my own fix hands right next to Ooh, it. Ooh, I like that a instead lot. Instead of having them like pick all of them and then go to the fix table. Is it, is it going to be a lot of fix Um, no, but I think I'm going to do cheese, sour cream, little cilantro maybe. Mm. But I'm going to have them there so you yeah. can put it on. Yeah. I like that. Maybe both sides. Some, some type of football dish, you know? Little and put them in little football dishes. Yes, along both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna talk about it, but it's a really big deal. Um, in and everyone was really invested. Sure, so sure. I did do a play by play on my stories and really got. How did Nick feel that he lost? I definitely got no eye contact, bump of the fist. <sighs> that was like, yeah, good job. Yeah, but we voted for each other. First, he was like. I'm just going to vote for myself. What are you fucking kidding? I'm not worried about this. I'll vote for myself like 10 times. I'm like, oh, okay. Patriot fan, I see. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> no. He was like, no, no. Um, so then the more I talked to him, I was like, oh, well, I voted for you because I was like, I think yours is the best that's going to win. And he's like, oh, fuck. He's like, I voted yeah, for, you. for you. And yeah. then like it made him be like, okay, I voted for you, whatever. Did they announce how many votes it was per Chile? Because if he would have lost by one. Yeah, exactly. Like we may have both uh, like tipped the yeah. our, our own scales. I don't know. He got third. Oh, so it could it could have come down to one vote, James. You never know. How many people were there, you think, that voted? Um, I think probably it looked like 25, maybe 30 Ooh. in and out. Ooh. In got, and out cuz you, you know you rotate 30, yeah, yeah. through. When you got 30, one vote either way could really swing and cause the difference. Yeah. But I, and with chili cook-offs, you know, it's, you cannot gauge. No. It's really hard to gauge. It's not like somebody tastes it and like, oh my God. Yeah. It's really a thinker. Yep. Type thing. Very thinking food. Mm -hmm. I know you're really excited about this. I am. I look, I've told you my, my past history. I've been to many chili cook-offs. I enjoy them. There is, to me, a very distinct version of, of chilies that I like mm -hmm. and versus the ones that I don't where I'm just like this is fucking garbage I should trash. make you do you like chili like eating love it chili. I love should chili. make you that one 
to kind of see what you yeah, think yeah, yeah. and then we can workshop it. Yeah, I'll gauge it. So I do think it needs to be a little spicier. Okay. All right. Well, now you know for next year. I do. Um, now, yeah, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you for second place. I even put something on my story about it. No, I know. During the game, I was just like, hey, <laughs> I know. let me know what happens. <laughs> People were, I like making I was those inside things the stadium really, yeah. and everybody in my section was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? What is he talking about? Jesse, I'm yeah. proud of you. We're I proud love of you. you. You go to Second Dan and place. he's like, whatever. Um, but it, I like to add a little, add, I feel like I add the competition to these things, whether I win or lose. Right. I like to get people riled up. Don't have a boring like chili tasting like let's really fucking talk shit to each other let's really try sure. let's work on our chilies all night like you want to be the winner yeah you know and what you i mean win. like you go to you, look i go to win anything i'm not showing up for second place you know yeah but like with these food like cookie exchange oh I, I bought it at the store i just wanted to come to the party like no 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 yeah like you need to fucking work on it come to win bring your a game and i think people appreciate it i think so I think so. I'm look. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I want. I want to see you win. I want to see what. I, I want to see a champion of the family. Yeah, I'm winning next year for sure. So. Okay, you're not. So you're not coming to Miami with me for the. Uh... Actually, no. I have to go <laughs> to Miami. <laughs> next year's in Miami. Oof. I really. I have to come to Miami. Man. A. I've never been. B. I've never been. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miami's uh, Miami's a fun town for like it's it's a fun town for three or four days. I used to say it's like Vegas, where it's a good three day town. Vegas has changed to me, where I don't mind staying in Vegas for a week. A week. Well, you can I, I really chill have no out problem. In Vegas now, like there are places yeah. to like um, escape the crowd, have a nice. There's places dinner, where, where like... you can you know you can be a part of people screaming in your face, dumping shots down your face, sure, and then walking around with a yard. But then there's another section where it's just like nice restaurants and other everything else. So like, like a whole nother world. I don't mind that. Um, Miami's Miami's d- different to me. Like I'm a I'm a three three four day guy. Well, I don't Miami. like to go up in the club, so I don't know how long. Like, do you know what I mean? It feels a lot. It's very clubby. I don't know what what you would do in a situation like that. Probably you probably hang out at the Clevelander a lot, um, which is outside a nice little you know fun flirty thing but for the super bowl there's always like parties and galas and get togethers and all that stuff so i think it, it'll probably be a different vibe from that but as far as the city goes for atlanta on this this last go round uh it was great zero problems across the board atlanta is atlanta traffic sucks um that was you know a big complaint but the the people and everything else couldn't have been uh friendlier nicer and uh, except for the patriots fans god damn it those guys are just cocksuckers uh, I, th- I think that's part of the reason why I hate their team. But one, their their style of play was just boring. Two, their fans are just fucking miserable. And the weird thing is, is like I, when I was growing up, the Patriots were like the worst team ever. Oh, that's right. So huh? they they just became great in the last you know fifteen years. So it wasn't it's not like the Packers, who the Packers have been consistently good for years and years and years. And you're like, all right, great. Uh, but the Patriots, are, it's it's new money. And it was just mm-hmm. like Brady, Belichick, and now mm-hmm. you're like, and they're just assholes about it. Where it's just, you know, kind of like Alabama Crimson Tide fans. You win that much in a boring style like that. And you're just kind of used to it. So then you start treating everybody else like cocksuckers. Um, Your best friend is like. Yeah, it is. And you know what? He, it, my best friend's a diehard Alabama fan. And I told him, like, he knows. Um, but, you know, after they got beat so bad in that national championship, he called me in the fourth quarter, which he never calls at all during the game at all. So. You knew it was bad. Mm. And he goes, Jesus, man, I don't think I've ever seen a team get crushed like this of ours, you know? And I was like, it's humbling, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, uh, so I think that, that took- It will change the, our two. Yeah, it took the shine on it. Uh, Patriots won again. Granted, it was boring as shit, but uh, they're going to keep talking shit and they're going to be- as, It's exactly like that SNL sketch of, of racial dratch. It's oh, bu- yeah, 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 It yeah. is literally a bunch of those fans. Oh, well, you ever just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and there was that, these one fans behind us, like one guy kept screaming in my ear, pushing me, pushing me. Finally, I turned, said the, the most humiliating shit to him of all time. Like, you don't play for the fucking team. And, you know. Yeah, sure. So don't think that just because your team is good. That you, you, you are a real you person in real good. life where yeah. it's just like, no. Uh, I mean, it just absolutely devastated this guy. 
Um, but there was some fans that were sitting around me that were hilarious. Like I walked in, there was two guys sitting in, in turbans behind me, um, full on turbans or whatever. And I'm with Dan and he goes, uh, we, we walk in and, and the first thing he said, he goes, don't worry, we're not going to blow up the stadium. And I was like, whoa, jeez, that means like, you're going to blow up the stadium. I know. And everybody in, in this section was looking around and I was just like, Hey man, is that a joke or is that not a joke? And he was like, no, I'm just kidding. Like, I just thought I would break the ice, you know, whatever. And I was just like, all right, cool. And they turned out to be great guys. And I was just like, all right, they were genuinely trying to fit in. But you know when someone tells a joke where you're just like, wow, that that does not sound yeah. like you're kidding right now. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Yeah. And I was like, but they, they actually crazy. turned out to be great guys. And I, this is kind of what I want to close out the show on is, again, man, I... It, there was a lot of laughter out of these guys. They were actually the most enjoyable people in our section too. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of Patriots fans for some reason. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I traveled, I had to go to Alabama after that. Um, and I was, you know, obviously in Georgia most of the week, uh, I went through South Carolina, I had to make a couple stops there. Cause the, uh, we, we up, I had to upload the show, <laughs> you know, you yeah. were, you, for those of you who don't know at home, Jesse edits this both video and audio Well, I'm sending back the audio and video to you. You're editing it. We try to take this very seriously of like, we know we're aware that 1.6 million people listen to the show. And I'm not saying this in a, in a braggy way. I'm saying it's a way of, I know you're, you, you guys are going to, to work and listening to the show and we're super grateful. I don't ever want to miss a time of not dropping this at eight o'clock on, mm-hmm. you know, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever this, the yeah. schedule is. Well, Sunday, Tuesday, and, uh, and Thursday night. I, I would feel awful even though this is a free show obviously like we're super grateful that we have this many listeners and and that you guys tune in three days a week and it's amazing so i would feel guilty if we missed a time when you sent me back the files obviously it it's a big transfer uh you hit me up and you were like hey they're done and i'm in i i was just going through georgia in the south carolina area and i had to pull over some weird small town in in Georgia or South Carolina, somewhere mm-hmm. like right on the border there. And uh, there was like a, a off this exit, there was like a Hampton Inn. And I was like, look, I'll rent a room. I just need Wi Fi, you know, or whatever. And they were like, no, it was this, this black guy who was like the nicest guy in the world. I was like, no, sit, have some drinks, whatever, you know, upload, do whatever you want, you know. And uh, it was great. And like, he was the nicest person in the world. His manager came out, was, was unbelievably nice. Uh, across the street was a, a Long John Silver's. I have not been to a Long John Silver's since college. I fucking love Long John Silver's. I'm a disgusting human being. Well, I know that I love it. Um, again, the people in there could not have been friendlier uh, t- to me. There was a, there was an older couple. Uh, the guy had, had a World War II hat on. They were probably he looked like he was like late 80s with his wife, and they were enjoying a meal. And I chatted with them. And, uh, and like, you know, he was helping me give instructions on the way back out to the highway, which, you know, I have GPS. I obviously sure, know that, but, but he's 88 Q. years old and doesn't, doesn't know. Um, I, 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 they looked like they were, they were done with their meals. And I was like, can I just take your trays for you guys? Mm-hmm. Uh, cause he had a cane. So I, mm-hmm. I threw away their, their trays and all that stuff. And like, um, I, I, the reason why I'm telling you all of this is uh, this is yet another trip where I've been to a bunch of different States and a bunch of places downtown, urban, rural, you name it, across the board, where people are genuinely great to each other. I I still do not believe in this narrative in the media that there is a racial divide or anything as bad as what they're saying whatsoever. Because I keep going to these weird places and cities and meeting all of these people from different ethnicities and uh, race. I mean, even sitting with those two guys with the turbans at the game, like, Jesus Christ, I'm with the... A guy who served in Iraq for, Mm -hmm. you know, God knows how many years. And it's just, there, there isn't, don't believe what's going on out there in the media. Like everybody is genuinely pretty goddamn nice to each other. Chances are if somebody's an asshole along the way, it's not really because of their race. They're just a fucking asshole. They're asshole and they're stupid. Yes. White or black or whatever. Uneducated and race. Yes. Whatever race you are. I did not come across any of that on any of these travels. And I have to go to a bunch of weird places all the time. And it just keeps happening throughout America. And I, I, I literally, I had maybe one negative response in one city from somebody, but it was just an asshole human. Not, right. It had nothing to do with anything race or otherwise. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. was just like, 
I, again, I just do not see what is going on. So uh, if you are listening and you're out there and you're thinking about going to any of these events or concerts or weird places and, and you read the media and you think, oh, man, I don't want to go to Virginia or wherever because there's, you know, people with tiki torches or whatever the fuck it is like they're taking very small segments of the population and blowing it up to make it look like it is this gigantic thing. Don't let that scare you into not going places or meeting people or being friendly to people while you're out. Because it is, in my opinion, like having traveled all of this much, and I know you hate it, um, I have not, I have not seen any of this. Yeah. I've not seen anything on what the media is talking about. And please, don't let that stop you being from an awesome human being when you're out. Because I've met so many great people doing all of this shit. Like, I just don't see it. Unless somebody's just a, a, a pure asshole at heart. Like, it doesn't matter what race you are at that point. You're just a fucking cocksucker. So, yeah. um, yet again, another great trip. And uh, uh, everybody was pleasant in all of these weird states. And it was, it was great. It was great across the board. With that, we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Shall we, Jabes? We shall. Uh, this one's going out to Carol Channing, who just passed away. She was actually the very first person to perform the halftime show at the Super Bowl. Okay. 1970. Uh, before then, there was three other Super Bowls, but they were uh, like college bands. So University of Arizona and Grambling State were the, the marching bands at the halftime show. 68 was the Grambling State Band. Uh, 69 was uh, Florida A&M University. And then 1970, they actually had a performer, Carol Channing, which is weird. I always think of her as like a show, show. actress, a Broadway, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. not a halftime performer. But I guess it just goes to show you how much that all of that has changed with, you know, how big the Super Bowl is and, and what a big deal it is playing the halftime show and all that shit. Um, me personally, here's my feeling on Maroon 5 having been there. I, I'm not a Maroon 5 fan. That's, uh, that's not me at all. I fucking, mm -hmm. I dislike them. Mm -hmm. I did not think that show was as bad as all the critics and all these people online were saying of like, fuck them and all this other shit. Like, no, it wasn't bad. They did exactly what Maroon 5 yeah. does. So, eh, you know, was I crazy about it? No, but I just don't like Mar Maroon 5. Yeah. So I, but I didn't think the was show was, was bad. No, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, but I didn't, I didn't think it was as bad as all that shit, man. That's a tough gig these days. People are. Everything's a tough gig these days. God, you can't it's crazy, isn't it? Shit without getting backlash. <laughs> I, know. I know. You can't take a job. You can't fucking agree to do a show. I mean. Yeah. But not like, then like the Aerosmith show was bad because they're a hundred years old and he can just scream now, Steven Tyler, and that's about it. The drummer, I thought I was physically worried about his health. That he was going to keel. Die during mm -hmm. the thing. I mean, it was just, just, and every <laughs> hit of the drum, I was like, he's going to die right now. Same with the bass player. Whereas like Steven Tyler and Joe Perry tried to maintain like, hey, we're still kind of young and hip. and Sure. And like skinny and skinny and wearing and cool shade. clothes. Yeah. 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 Wearing cool clothes and leather and a lot of scarves and, and all that pants. shit. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Like the Joe Perry's got this weird dirty Sanchez mustache where it's just shaved down the middle and it's only two sides, you know? And it's like, look, I applaud that hey. because they're still gigantic cool. rock stars. And when they go out in public, sure. that's what you expect out of them and all of that. What I thought was hilarious though, was that the bass player and the drummer were so over it that they were just like, man, I am, a f I am someone's grandfather and I am right. I'm and they gray hair. Like it. Yeah. I, have, I have gray hair. I am wearing a cutoff t-shirt that is from some golf tournament you know in my sure. in my neighborhood that was a it's fundraiser. like if your dad dressed up as Aerosmith 100 <laughs> percent. then that's all I kept thinking so if my dad was the drummer of Aerosmith that's exactly what he would look like and play if you just tied a bandana around his head and cut the sleeves off a golf shirt sure and that was it and, and then like, boom oh my god dude. put him up there because <laughs> they're you know yeah and there was there was a lot of people there who were just there to see Aerosmith I would say it was 50 50 I'm sure so they was it was fifty percent of us who were there to see Post Malone. There was fifty of them there to see Aerosmith. Like the, the we'd rad seats, but like uh, the couple next to us, they did not stand up for Post Malone. They didn't get up once. They were you know just chatting to each other like nothing was going oh. on. Yeah, yeah. And then when That's we left horrible. during Aerosmith, no, but they looked at us like, oh my what? god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not even gonna shit wow. on them because we you know we did the same thing. We were like we were sure. checking out of this. Sure. 
Uh, but either way, Super Bowl weekend was fun. Uh, I miss being here, but I'm, I'm proud of you for winning the second place in the Chili Thank Cook you. Off. Thank you. Subscribe to the video show on iTunes or YouTube, please. We're doing it. A lot of video this year. That's our thing. That's our New Year's resolution. We don't make resolutions. But we're trying to give you the best show possible. And I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to give you the Bodhi. The Bodhi, Jabes. I know you love it. No, it looks good. You little grease monkey lover. Yeah, you've just got some time. All right. That's all. All right. It's time to kill. (laughs) For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.